drop. Okay, it looks like uh, we've just hit our two-minute grace period. So uh, welcome to Triton Data Center office hours on September 28th. Um, today we're going to have, it's probably going to be a, a shorter discussion. I don't have as much material this time, but it's. I just wanted to talk a little bit about documentation. Um, and, and welcome, Brian. Because um, last, uh, the last office hours we talked about you know, I talked about that HA proxy uh, Triton CNS combo, which I thought was cool because I found this server template config, and then I was able to pair that with um, at Nick's suggestion. He's like, "Oh, you can also." At first, I was just using the regular um, Triton CNS DNS names, and then he's like, "Oh, you know, you can also use the SRV records feature." And I was like, "What? That's pretty cool." And the SRV records feature, uh, the documentation about it is in GitHub but we haven't written a thing about it to go into our normal documentation on docs.triton data center. It's a really cool feature. And I want to be able to like, you know, I want to shout that from the heavens and have it be read everywhere. And it takes a little bit of work right now to find it. And so what I wanted to just discuss was a little bit about documentation, how it affects certain projects and, you know, the use of those projects, how they be picked up or, you know, for me as just my personal experience, if I don't find the right documentation, I'll I will not after the download I might not touch that that pro project again because I don't know how to use it right because the best documentation gets you easily through those first steps and getting to that hello world or beyond hello world um, um, steps. So um, just wanted to talk a little about that. What might be some suggestions uh, people may have on what can improve our documentation. I already know some places, like I mentioned, Triton CNS is one, and um, places where we can improve documentation. But, and Brian, you were not on yet, but um, there is, you know, there's tools, and, and Jasper mentioned some of them, that there's tools, right, that we can use that can augment, like GitHub, and some of the stuff we're doing to help write documentation without having to do extra work. Um, you know, ASCII docs was one. And, and can you mention the other tool again, Jasper? Yeah, yeah, there was uh, Antora. It, it, uh, Antora. it basically clicks on uh, on ASCII doc. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, we haven't, I don't think we've looked into, we, we may have looked into some tooling. I think right now, like I said, for docs.triton data center, we're using Kirby in a Git workflow, which does, um, it, it works pretty well. But um, one of the things is, is like you said, is that, you know, the closer the documentation is to the code, the less stale it usually is, right? Because you're putting your updates with your code into Git and how things work and having a second, third, fourth, whatever place to go write and have it again can mean there's this disparity between the GitHub uh, documentation, the readme.mds and things like that, and then the actual documentation where people may go and Google. And so I just want to talk a little bit about that. So... Open source and proprietary projects both rely heavily on good documentation because documentation is going to inform the, the user, the consumer, how to use your product. Um, and it hasn't definitely has an influence on a project's adoption. Just speaking from personal experience, I know that, of course, doc, you know, projects with better documentation are the ones that get picked up and used because you're able to walk through a product and have able to, you know, um, bootstrap it and get it working right and it's interesting because documentation is a whole team effort and it affects every team member from engineering to marketing um, I've worked at a few startups and I've seen where you know documentation has always been either a place where we we always need to have improvement or is always something that you know, we're always constantly working on to improve because we know some, there's some feature or something that isn't documented well or some new feature that isn't documented at all or something that's really cool and isn't documented right and like it would be killer to have it documented and so for users documentation will be a determining factor in whether they continue to use the product right so that's just that's just there um so triton documentation specifically we have quite a few items and you know we have a whole operating system and there's so many parts to document right there's apis man pages online guides install manuals and we're always looking to improve and add to our documentation because in addition to code, documentation can be attributed or suggested on GitHub. So, you know, that's one of the things too is, you know, pull requests. And, and I know a lot, not a lot of people 
put in pull requests for documentation, but they do put in issues like this isn't documented, things like that on certain projects. Um, but um, but yeah, it's something I, 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 I help work on, but I would like to also improve. And then for Triton, for instance, we have docs.tritondatacenter.com, API docs.tritondatacenter.com. We have forums and GitHub repos that are public. We also have some private ones too for stuff that's um, internal that we work on. And so we have a lot of places where there's documentation that's either um, existing and needs updating or there's new stuff we have that maybe can be documented better. Um, but it's, you know, it's a lot of work to get documentation because it takes the implementer, um, engineering, and usually a good consumer helps with that too because they can help put holes in where they're like, this doesn't sound the way it should or things like that. Um, and so love is needed. So besides install documentation, which I think we're still working on, Triton CNS, image creation, tutorials, and then um, I talked a little bit about this before you jumped on, Brian, was applications. So like those digital ocean style posts, could help augment the current documentation. Mm -hmm. So things maybe even for smart OS. So I, one thing I was looking to do was set up PHP and Apache. I still don't know how to do that. I still can't find the right documentation and maybe I need to write it, but I have to find out how to do it. And so that's something I would really like to, to help augment. Um, more blog posts would also be helpful um, for us. I think that um, we heard this from uh, one of our paying customers who when they were trying to go back to their uh, higher ups and help justify why they're paying for Triton one of the comments their higher ups made was we don't see a lot of activity on their website is this project still active and you know the GitHub activity although we do have a lot of GitHub activity so that's I think they weren't looking at all the places they could but there is something to be said about public facing blog posts um, and talking about what you are doing and so you know I just wanted to discuss if, if if you guys had any ideas or some places you know could use some updating Jasper if you have anything or Brian if you know anything off the top of your head well I guess uh, probably the thing you touched upon uh, a bit earlier um, in order to make it easier to contribute, um, having it in GitHub or Git, uh, yeah, that would really reduce friction to, for example, if somebody makes a PR, you can add documentation in that same PR, right? So um, some tooling like Entora, or there are probably alternatives, which uh, can scrape all these repositories and create a comprehensive piece of documentation or reference guide um, while you're still able to use separate repositories could be really valuable um, because yeah, you can keep the documentation with the code uh, and you can keep the documentation with the PRs and it makes it easier in a PR to say, okay, nice feature or nice fix, but can you update the documentation in this PR? Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, that's one of the things I'm, I'm glad you gave that suggestion because, um, you know, I think we haven't really, I don't think we've really, I think we have in some ways, but we haven't really stepped back too much and said like, oh, is there any tooling that might make this easier? Um, you know, I've used a few different. Well, I usually try to. And. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, we're like, uh, if someone's updating something in. Um, in a repo that is like changing the API surface. Um, mm -hmm. I've asked for people to make sure that the, the documentation in the repo gets updated along with that. Yeah. Um, now, API docs .com, um is basically just the, um, uh, the external APIs of Triton. So it's like uh, Cloud API, Manta, and Docker, pretty much. Um, and we don't have um, a comprehensive website for um, uh, the internal interfaces. So like, you know, vMappy, Image API. Um, those things. Actually, Image API does have a public one. Uh, 
because it's like images.smartos.org is a public service. So that one's on there. Um, but like nappy and sappy, like we don't, um, we have the, um, the documentation in GitHub, but we don't have like one place where it's all aggregated together. Yeah. Um, but where yeah, that's, that's a real one shame. of those repos, um, yeah. And I'm, I'm hearing you on this. Um, but where people have made changes to um, something that needs to be reflected in the documentation, I have asked people to make sure that that is updated as well. Um, but well, I'm definitely not so, questioning the, uh, the the how do you call that the thriftiness of the documentation. So the <laughs> the, the the big the big uh, how do you call it. Uh, well, strategy is a big word, but there is so many, uh, so much information hidden in repositories, which, like CNS information in the CNS repo, which people don't see, which contains all this great information about how CNS is built, how you can use it, and what kind of cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, and people are, in that right. sense, really missing out on that. Yeah, we. Um, it would be super helpful to like aggregate together the various operator guides um, and user guides that we have for um, for all the different repos. Um, and docs.tritondatacenter.com, which is like our main documentation website. Um, we do have a repo for that, but it's always been private. Um, yeah. I'm not quite sure what the reason for that was, um, but we've kept it private mostly just because I wasn't sure um, if there was anything in there that shouldn't be made public, um, you know, kind of just erring on the side of caution. Yeah, I think that's um, okay because it's like, it's mostly, I think sometimes you just want to keep the inner workings, right, of a of a website in some cases, like, you know, people can do inspect source and all that, but sometimes you just want to keep like, yeah, you know, attack. It might vector. be because it's Kirby. Yeah. And if there's like a license key in there, then exactly. um, then we can't have that. Um, but you know, it it would be very helpful if we could have it more like docs.smartos.org, where um, if people encounter something that um, is incorrect or stale, um, they can submit a pull request for it. Um, or if they were trying something and like it just didn't work and they s offer a suggestion, their suggestion's not necessarily always right, um, but we can then use that as a stepping off point to uh, uh, enhance the documentation um, and try to account for um, the issue that they had. So I, I definitely would like to get that opened up. Um, yeah. And if we can switch to something that's not curvy, um, <laughs> and yeah, there's a much better chance that that we will be able to to open that repo. Yeah, um, and I would really love to. So. Yeah, this is yeah, and this is more of like not like oh you know critical like finger shaming at all. Like this is just like like this is just for me thinking like oh like you know I, I want to have better documentation and I want to I want to help write it too like. I'm responsible for some of it too, of course, like no blame on anybody. I just want to know is, yeah, is there a better way? And that's why I want to take suggestions and, and feedback. Cause I'm like, there's gotta be, you know, a better way or easier way, especially, you know, in 2023, um, you know, versus the style that, you know, we may have started, you know, years ago. Right. And we just yeah. haven't, we haven't, we haven't gotten around to changing things. So we, we have put focus on, you know, functionality and all these other things, but there, there's some tooling that may make this easier. And, and Jasper has mentioned a few and, and, you know, one of the things is we're already using a Git workflow. And so those tools like ASCII docs and Antara and things like that might, might be a good choice for us going forward. I'm not saying we're going to pick those up tomorrow or anything like that, or we have to do that, but I'm just saying like, Hey, maybe it's something we should look at because, like, like for instance, like I said, the Triton CNS SRV feature that's in the GitHub docs, but not in docs.tritondatacenter.com. And then, so yeah, I need, I need to go and help write that because I have time to go do that. But it would be nice, yeah, if we can have um, 
more of a central way to help get stuff moved over because it is nice like you know uh, you know you don't want to have to look in four different places or if you're the author you don't want to have to write in four different places right that's just that's like you know that just gets you annoyed because you're like oh man did i updated the documentation here but it's not here and then also from the user perspective they're like oh well i do i go here or do i go here do i go to github okay i go to github for the latest but that's got doesn't have the this part in it this you know that kind of thing right and so i just i just for yeah. me i just want to have i want to help the the community the users and selfishly i want to help myself you know being able to use the documentation myself like i look at this from the perspective of the user like i want to be able to go to one place and i and i'm in the thick of things so i'm like okay i can say hey we should i want to suggest doing this it may be wrong but <laughs> you know you know we can always take suggestions and then analyze it but i think like you said you know we're using kirby right now um which is a relic of what casey had picked um and has licensing and and i think even um and it's funny because he's actually back at joint again um i just saw on the web page yeah um but um uh, but yeah, so there's like maybe some some changes or, or tooling we could make. I mean, it, it, it's it's a lot of work, I think, to do this. So it's not like, like I said, it's not going to happen overnight. But it's something maybe looking forward we can start to look at on how to improve is, what, is just how I'm thinking about it. So so definitely um, just wanted to just put that out there. Um, and... Um, so for my end, you know, I, I want to, one of the things I want to commit to is, is more blog posts. Um, so, you know, when, you know, obviously, uh, one of the big things we are, you know, features we're looking for forward to in the future, future, like we talked about Linux CN at some point, um, things that we have that I think are really cool that we, we should talk about ourselves more of. So like, you know, like the HA proxy Triton CNS combo, like make make a blog post about that just you know stuff that we know is cool and people might get use out of i think i want to commit to helping that so that's where i can really help as i'm not you know i'm not super technical but i'm somewhat technical where i think i can help that's how i can help contribute and so i want to commit to helping do this it's not i'm, I'm definitely not wanting to put work on other people i want to be able to contribute and so that's why i wanted to talk about this it looks like we've got a few more guests. Um, so just to recap a little bit, um, I was just talking about documentation in general and how, you know, projects, proprietary open source, heavily depend on documentation. Good documentation um, helps determine whether a project can, you know, is adopted widely, right? And so um, one of the things that I think has always been... Um, going back to that open source conversation we had a few office hours ago, um, you know, the popularity of your product, you know, sometimes can depend on the ease of use. And, you know, Triton is really awesome because it is opinionated in a lot of ways. It's, it's easy to pick up and install, but there is parts that if it was well, more well documented, I think would be even easier, you know, just from seeking from my experience as using, um, even though I've, I've had a pretty good time on using smart OS in the documentation, um, save for the Googling smart OS still brings up Oracle Solaris, which is really annoying. But, um, but I've been able to find a lot of stuff, but it does take a little bit of digging. So I always want, my desire is always to want easier to find material, more centralized material. And then on top of that, like I have on the slide there, digital style, digital ocean style posts, because um, I've actually used DigitalOcean styles posts for like MySQL or um, Nginx or things like that, where they have a post on how to do something on Ubuntu 23 or whatever and how to set it up and where the config goes and all that. And it would be nice because we used to have something like that for SmartOS when we had, um, I think it was like the SmartOS Plus images. So we had some images like that had, uh, we I think we even had a WordPress one. We had like an Apache uh, PHP one and some other ones and they actually you know they would come pre-set up with some of the stuff which was nice but they had some documentation to go along with it and so um, since we don't have those anymore it would be nice to have some 
guides on how to do certain things on smart os here's how you set up apache and php here's how you set up nginx and php or you know or more modern stuff right here's how you install node.js and get it up and going and things like that that they may exist on other web pages but it would be nice to have it all kind of centralized any uh any comments or questions out there So if you're looking for uh, any help with Antora, if you want to set up a demo or test or something, yeah. just give a shout out. Uh, I would definitely be, uh, be willing to help out with that. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to hit you up for the Envoy stuff and the Antora stuff, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I would just like, you know, um, yeah, because I don't know. I'm not intimately familiar with how our GitHub repos are all set up brian you would probably have more insight into that but um um it would be nice to to see if there's a way we could start picking up some of the stuff that might be in github and get that over to a more centralized place um and that would take a lot of i i think that would help take a lot of the work off of you know we don't have a huge developer team right so um letting them just be able to go do their own do their thing just in github and then have that committed as documentation if they want to would be nice as well because i don't want i don't want anybody to have to do more work than they need to of course um you know, i'm trying to be helpful where, where i can so that's why i like to write documentation where i can on docs.triton data center um but i think um even after the last overhaul that we did there's definitely a lot more work that i know needs to be done by myself and i have more time than some of the others to, to work on that so i don't want to put this on anybody else but anything that can make my job easier is is great and of course anything that makes it a better experience for the user is what i'm trying to achieve a comment regarding the pre-built application containers that sure. used to be a thing um so i used some of those they were nice uh, it was a nice way to get off the ground. It was a nice way to keep going forward. Um, first thing around that, yes, having pre-built application containers for the most common use cases is absolutely awesome as a bootstrapping activity. It lets people get on with what they're trying to do immediately, which gives them the space to try and figure out how to live in the not Linux. Um, the downside of all of that is from the perspective of somebody who is new to operating on Triton, there's no container registry where people have contributed things to. Yeah. And we know why. I'm darn certain everybody sitting <laughs> in this session knows exactly why that is with the implications of how it works. Right. And the fact that importing ZFS data sets is an inherently risky operation. But that's a real stumbling block for being able to contribute application images, of which I built quite a few at some point or another. It was sort of like, I built these, I then handed them out to friends because they were useful to those friends. And then it was sort of like, but how do we do wider distribution? It was sort of like, um, not only do is lighting an image server a non-documented path, but also advertising the fact that the image server exists and then cascading onto that importing from a foreign image server one that you are as an operator choosing to trust isn't exactly a smooth path so i like pre-built application images i like pre-built application images that take advantage of the cloud environment you're living in i built a thing that uh, spun up console and vault and used cns and mData to discover its way into operation, and that all worked wonderfully. It was just a matter of, and now what do I do with it? And that wasn't just an app. That wasn't just a documentation problem. It was sort of like, right. So how do I distribute this? And the answer was, that's a lot of pieces. Yeah, and sort of where I'm trying to think of maybe splitting the middle is if if we don't have that ability to do that because you know obviously some of the stopgap for that was 
was when we did Docker, right? Was to um, was support Docker, and and then you could use the Docker instances. Obviously, that's LX instances and not Smart OS. Um, and so, and, and as you said, it's not necessarily that problem itself isn't a documentation problem. But where where I'm thinking to go if we can't do that is is support it with documentation, which is um, something like I said, those, those digital ocean style posts where, um, you can say like, you could have smart OS, you know, this application, here's how you do it. And here's the best way to install it using like package source or something like that. And, you know, just give a clue on, you know, cause I think the, the thing, the hardest thing for me, you know, personally is when I'm using, and I've always tried to be getting better at smart OS, right. Is, um, where the config files are or, where do what where do I change this particular config to to work or be in harmony with this other application? And so um, having discoverable posts uh, that are showing up on Google, where you know I think of a good majority of people search for things, um, is one thing where I'm thinking would be like a happy medium is just having more blog posts and just more traffic to certain places. Because one of the problems that I said talked about just a few minutes ago was when you search smart OS for like you know commands and stuff like that, it still brings up, and there's really no way for us to control this, but it still brings up Oracle Solaris a lot of the time. And you're like, I don't, I'm looking for stuff on smart OS, and even the Oracle stuff, you know, some of it might still be the same and might work, but you know, you just want, you want to see a page that's like, oh, here's how you do it on smart OS, and so that's where I just want to get better at adding on to things is how do I, I can't control the SEO that much and I can't control the search engine, but what I can control is adding the content. So I'm hoping that um, in partnership with, you know, my other team members and, and hopefully um, maybe there's some people I can reach out to in the community that um, we can get some guest blog posts or just some content somewhere um, that helps kind of build the SEO for smart OS. Cause I think for a lot of people, the hardest part is just finding that guide and we can read man pages and we can do all that, but we know for the average Joe that may be using it, they're going to like, they're going to Google something and if they don't find anything, they're going to like, you know, be frustrated. And that's just coming from my perspective too, of like being the average person, like, Hey, I want, I really want to use this, but I can't find this information. And so, you know, the pre-bill application thing that might not be, the end goal, but I think for the short term, at least documentation, and that's why I brought this up, was that documentation was kind of like the immediate thing I think we could address short term and long term. I, yeah. I can, in fact, uh, confirm Googling and frustration. That was a yeah. early on experience. I was well familiar with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've all, I think we've all experienced that. I mean, you know, I think that's, that's always been a thing with with using um, Smart OS and, and maybe Illumos, uh, other Illumos flavors. I'm not sure because I haven't I haven't really used um, OmniOS personally, um, or or some of the other flavors very much. But um, I know with Smart OS at least, like yeah, trying to use Google certain things, you're just like, what the heck? Why is this bringing up the Oracle page? And you're just like, you're angry. And and like I said, the example I was given was or I was giving was um, when I was trying to manually set up Apache and PHP, I can do it in Ubuntu Linux. I can do it in uh, Red Hat flavors. I have trouble when I'm trying to do it on smart OS. I can install the, I know how to install the packages, package source, all that stuff. I could even probably compile them from source, but I just don't know where the right config is to get them working in harmony when I do that. And I just want an easy place to find that. And maybe I have to create that is what I said but I'd like it to be created. And so, you know, sometimes you have to like, you know, this is the thing with open source. Sometimes you're like, oh, you got to pull up your sleeves and do a little dirty work yourself. And I don't mind doing that because my reward is that other people adopt it. Like I'm rewarded and I'm satisfied when other people use our product. That, that makes me happy, makes me satisfied. Like, you know, some people... They do want, you know, and of course we're, we're very happy when our product is, is, you know, we get paid support as well, but just adoption as well, I think is, is great for us. I like to see more members of the community. I like to see more people discovering how great our tooling is. 
And so if I can help make that happen, that's what I want to happen. So, you know, that's where the kind of the perspective I'm coming from is seeing the frustration, hearing the frustration and knowing, you know, I am only one person, but I think one person can still make a difference in some of these things. And, and hopefully I can get other people to come on board. And one of the things that maybe we do, like we talked about is making the tooling easier for other people to contribute documentation wise, maybe valuable as well so so yeah i just i just like i said i just know the frustration you know the frustration so um trying to think of ways to to solve that we can't do it in just one day but i think i think we can make a big make a good chunk in a short amount of time at least um and start just put at least having the content out there and then getting it discovered in it i think it'll get ranked better so i know i want to create more content myself So yeah, if you have any, if you guys have, um, you know, if you guys have suggestions or places where you know um, we could improve content, you know, let us know on um, Discord, IRC, wherever. Because um, I'm trying to. This is part of my undertaking is to help improve documentation. We've we've done, like I said, we've done a little bit of work in the past. You know, we want to think we had to take out all the the joint mentions and they're still, I'm still going through the documentation and finding yeah. the word, <laughs> word joint still mentioned in there. So, oh, go ahead. So do you, do you want to be uh, notified when we find joint loosens various pieces and parts of uh, Triton? Sure. I mean, I need to okay. go. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, still want to Yeah, Yeah, for sure. If, if you find things, you can let us know. Um, some things, um, are realistically not ever going to change like um the the zone brand that um we often refer to as native brand um is joint right there's right. joint brand zones and there's joint minimal brand zones that's not going to change yeah. um that's kind that's of like um very you know, pretty uname pretty. minus a says sun os you know um, making those kind of changes um, have like super deep ramifications and like a million things are going to break. Um, but places where it says like, you know, this product is like authored by joint and go to the joint website, like those kinds of things. Um, we we want to get those updated. Um, we went through and updated a ton of things. Um, but when we um when we moved out of joint um and created our own github org and um migrated all the repos over um it was more than 500 repos um and so like we we kind of decided like we're going to do the ones that we touch um because there's too much to just go do it all exhaustively um but uh you know, if there's a, a repo that you're looking at and it has references to um, uh, to Joint or to SDC, um, and those can reasonably be changed, feel free to open a PR for that. Um, yeah, SDC is another one where, um, like, you know, the repo is SDC v Mappy, right? We're probably never effort to go through um, and change that is significant. And then like we've made zero progress except for changing the branding, you know? So even at joint it, we had decided like, we're not going to um, try to exhaustively change the SDC branding. Um, like SDC ADM will always stay SDC ADM, uh, things like that. Um, also fixing the fingers places, from typing, it would be miserable. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I know there are people who have um, like written scripts or run SDC ADM. So if we just change the name of it, um, like that's going to break a lot of people. Um, even when um, uh, when we moved out of Joint and I redid the image servers um, because we need to have new domain names for all of those. Um, on the head node, there's updates. Or there's image ADM, right, which shows you the images that are um, 
uh, installed on that compute node itself. And then there's STC image ADM, which shows you the images that are installed in your image ADM in that data center. And then there's updates image ADM, which shows you the images that are available on updates.tritondatacenter.com. And then there's joint image, uh, image ADM, which would show you the images on images.joint.com. Um, and I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm moving these over to like smart OS or images.smartos.org. Um, and like, there are definitely people that have scripts written using joint image ADM, like, but it's not joint image ADM anymore. So like I needed to rename that command. Um, so the canonical one now is images image ADM, which still feels a little bit clunky, but you know, it, that's what I ended up settling on. Um, but then I had to make sure to include a compatibility symlink so that people were using the old name wouldn't break. Um, you know, um, so e even if we were going to go through and like update all of the SDC references, uh, like on the command line, so that they say Triton, you know, Triton ADM or, you know, um, Triton VMAP E slash VMs, right? Um, we'd need to have like a ton of compatibility symlinks for all of those things anyway. Um, and it's, I don't know, probably not worth the effort. And it's not worth the effort for as small a team as we have, you know, um, if, uh, um, if we were the size of VMware, sure, we could do something like that. Um, but, you know, even in, um, you know, Mac OS 10 Sonoma, which was just released, um, you use some ob Objective C classes, and it's like, um, you know, NS text area, and NS means next step, right? Um, so they're like they've got references to a, an operating system that hasn't existed um, for more than twenty years now. Um, so, um, like, I don't feel so bad about having those yeah. those kinds of references around. Um, but yeah, so some of the things, like even in some of the documentation, um, like we can't just like grep for joint. Uh, and change it in all the places because there's still going to be a ton of places where joint is the correct reference there. Um, but in the cases where it's not something that requires it to be joint, like um, uh, you know, like the the image brand and stuff like that, um, then totally we we'd love to um, to get those things changed. And um, there's actually like a lot of documentation. There's um, way more than it seems like. Um, so, uh, even if we like try to go and exhaust and do it all ourselves, um, there's going to be things that we miss. So in the case I had in my mind was I found it in a man page because I was down in a man page. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Man pages. Um, which, which one was it? I have no idea. I saw it. I chuckled. <laughs> I moved on. Oh, there you okay. Go. When I see it again, because if I was in the man page once, I'll be down in that man page again. Yeah, I'll remember right. that that's something to report. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let us know. Because uh, in most cases, we would like to get that updated. Um, even in, like, a lot of man pages um, will still say, um, like, in the Solaris operating system, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the, the Illumos community has been... Um, trying to make sure that when we come across those, we change those to say Illumos because we're, we're not Solaris anymore. We're, uh, uh, there are distinct divergences. Um, so yeah, you, if you run across those, let us know. We'll, we'll get that taken care of. Yeah. And my main, cause my main thing was like, I think is links a lot of like, um, I forgot where the last, I saw one recently. Might have been on. It might have been on. Um, it might have been on GitHub when I was messing with. Um, I was messing with uh, Percona cluster, uh, and when I think like when you install it, it actually gives this GitHub link, and I think there's still a link to a joint page that we need to go. I'll have to go look. I I just saw mm, it yesterday. Interesting. But yeah, it was just in an old 
you know, there's some repo of something that, in this case, it was Percona cluster, so it wasn't necessarily our product, right? So we haven't, like, put a huge focus on it. Yeah. But, um, you know, just some things where there's, like, I think it was a bad link in there. So that's, because the main thing I want to get rid of is, like, bad links, right? Or, you know, make sure links go to the right page, um, especially when it's in, in, internal link. Like, if it's a docs page, it needs to go to another docs page, and it exists, and it goes to the wrong place. I want to get those fixed. Um, and obviously, right. And obviously, using just so a lot of what I did was do a find and replace. So I used VS Code, you know, and some of the other text editors have like you can actually do a find and it will search all the files. So I had the Kirby repo locally on my computer and then committed it. And of course, you have to like even doing that is hard because you're still having to you need to double check you're not going to replace something with something wrong. And so yeah. We have people, you know, we had others I, checking our work when we were doing that. Like, you know, I'd submit a PR and like Nathan or somebody be like, hey, that's wrong or this is wrong. And that's what we need because you just need somebody else checking your work. It just is nicer that way. But of course, there's still going to be things that are missed because either capitalization was different or sometimes it was like joint.us or some other weird domain or something that like it didn't catch for some reason on the search. Because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't using like a, a really nice a really good, fairly tight regex or something like that. So I know there's stuff still lingering out there. So it's definitely worth taking another look. So I'll, I'll definitely have to go through that. But yeah, if you guys find stuff and, um, and like I said, you know, there's places that I know, cause I said, like I mentioned on this page, like Triton CNS, I think on the docs, there's like some features that are just in the GitHub, like the SRV record feature that should be like front and center. Um, cause it, it works really well and is cool. You know that should be on the, the page. It, it should be in more than one place um, because it's a feature that people could use. Um, image creation. Um, I think we have the process in GitHub, and obviously we talked about it here on Office Hours. But I want to make sure I help um, make sure that's documented well um, and in a couple different places. So because I don't think we I don't think we've updated it on docs.tritondatacenter.com yet, if I'm not mistaken, but. Um, that's something I'd like to help make sure it gets done on there as well. Tutorials, like I said, I think would be great. Just more more guides on how to do certain things that we know of. Um, but yeah, it's all just it's just going to take you know a little bit of elbow grease, a lot of elbow grease. Um, but you know, I think with suggestions and community help, I think we can do a really good job with it. And um, you just having people not I'm not saying people have to write documentation but even just giving suggestions i'm so open to because you know one pair of eyes misses something that another pair of eyes finds and that's what i like about open source and community and peer reviewing as i like that's why i always when i write something i always like having somebody else read it because i'll miss something that i you know i write a certain way and i see certain things and i like it when other people find stuff like dan is always like correcting me on stuff and i'm i like that because i'm like i don't know what i don't know and if I'm wrong on something, I like to be corrected because I want to do it the right way. And if, you know, I don't mind being told, hey, that's wrong. I'm fine with that because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm willing to admit that. I want to do something the right way or say something or explain something the right way. And I'm totally up for that. Like, it's not a problem. Like, I don't, you know, I'm open to criticism. Like, it's, I'm okay with that because I think that just makes you get better at what you're doing. If you just shut down and think you're always doing something the right way, you're not going to improve. And so I want to improve, and I want to improve Triton so, itself. In a community contribution that I can probably go do, I run a concerning amount of Apache from package source using Ansible to do update operations, and I've shot myself in the foot repeatedly doing that. <laughs> so I have a pretty solid idea where most of the foot guns are for doing that kind of work at this point. Um, I unfortunately have internalized most of them, but if we're going to go down the path of here's how you run Apache on SmartOS, there's a couple of things that you should know before you're going in, because most people don't just want Apache, they probably want PHP with yep, it. Exactly. And then it's a cascading fun of all of the pieces that have to move to make that work. And then, oh, by the way, don't shoot your foot off when you do a package, uh, package in update upgrade sequence, because... There's a number of sequences there where it blew away my entire website. It was quite oh, unkind. Man. Oh man, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that'd be cool. 
Go ahead, Brian. I just said yikes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I know the horror of watching that happen, and you can't hit Control C fast enough. So, <laughs> the other half of that story is I wrote a a Frighten user side daemon. Um, I describe it that way. It's, it's designed to work against Cloud API that generates rolling snapshots of all of my operational environment. Um, and that's saved our butts more than once because the vast majority of the containers that are running these Apache sites have like our snapshots walking back 90 days. It's a really handy tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Im or instant snapshots um, is one of the best features of Triton. Um, and it's um, a bit underutilized in part because um, of the number of people running HVM, um, which doesn't snapshot well or the same. Um, uh, but so I use it extensively to the point where I'm reasonably certain the vast majority of the data sitting inside of the head nodes manatee is literally just logs of the snapshot operations because it's, well, aggressive, and there's a lot of them. And this has been the thing that has saved my butt more than once, and it is not well advertised because it would require that you'd be operating on a smart OS zone. It is one of the best features. Well, it works with Telex as well, but yeah. Okay, sorry. I don't have a lot of um, stick time flying LX because apparently everything I wanted to fly on LX utilized some Linuxism that was not sufficiently emulated and blew up in my face over and over again. So I kind of shied away from that. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Like, um, uh, if I could do it in LX, it's almost certainly going to work in a, a smart OS zone. Um, so I'm going to do that instead. Um, and if it can't work there where I had to choose Linux, um, in most cases, LX would be missing the thing that I needed anyway. Um, but there are a lot of people who um, uh, prefer um, LX zones. They, they like the containerism, but they, they don't want to go so far as to jump all the way into SmartOS. Um, because they they like being able to um, uh, use their um, uh, like familiar packaging system stuff like that. Um, so I totally get that too. Yeah, I've kind of flopped back and forth myself. Like I'll do things in Smart OS, and then if um, you know if like it's something I can't maybe find exactly how to do on Smart OS, I've tried lx as well if it works well there i'll i'll use it there but yeah and it usually comes down to like it's the pack of some packages easily available in apt or something and it works or um you know or it works um or it's it's an apt or yum or something like that and i have instructions on how to do it that's how i usually go but um you know if it's available in smart os and i can do it i try to do it on on smart os um and I see a, some comments rolling by in the chat. And I'm <laughs> going to point at the one case where I could point at it and say, okay, here's a thing that made a lot of sense to me to try and run in an LX zone until I gave up and did HVM, which was Mattermost, because their licenses are weird. Let's go with weird. Um, right. The binary they post is BSD binary licensed. Everything else, I'm... I'm confused half the time. Yeah, yeah, we, we ran it's like off. the um, the base thing is like open source and free to use, but then there's like all of the different plugins uh, and add-ons, and if you want to do anything, um, uh, like if you're actually using this for your business, then the open source version is almost certainly not going to cut it for you. Um, so yeah, we, we needed, when we ran it at joint, we needed several of the plugins. Um, and those were the four pay plugins. Um, so yeah. And I think we even had to like get it and then build them ourselves. Oh man. Um, 
Yeah, Mattermost seemed like it was but, an adventure for for you. The op for you. I mean, you Brian has like an operator. Like, you know, it was like it was nice because like uh, you have your own data, right? Because that's like the whole um, thing versus Slack. You know, Slack has your data, but then you're still you're having to worry about all those things. It's like running your own email server almost, right? Or I guess even maybe. Um, kind of, yeah. It's got its <laughs> its own list of um, uh, things to worry about, but yeah. Let's see. Oh, and then Jasper commented, "I re-implemented the SSO for the o- open source version of Mattermost at some point." Nice. Yeah, I mean, Mattermost was was nice. Um, you know, I mean, Slack is so popular, obviously, and you know, it's. I think, and then after Samsung. Um, bot joint samsung was a big slack user so eventually we ended up migrating over there yeah they were paying for it anyway and yeah. we needed um uh, we had some um yeah we needed to like make accounts for um all of the samsung people so they could get on our matter most and they were like why do we have to have two chat things so yeah. we eventually ended up just going straight with slack anyway yeah um, but, but matter most is i mean i liked the product I liked, you know, it worked exactly like Slack, you know, all the keyboard shortcuts, all that stuff. And it was nice to know that our data, you know, when, and we, whenever, when I would go on Twitter and see Slack is down and we would still be working, I was always happy. <laughs> Slack is down and we're still chugging along. So we're not dependent on Slack's. Owning your own infrastructure is a, at least double edged, possibly quadruple right. edged sword. Exactly. There's that though. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but it, like I said, we, I think, um, I don't think we ever had, except for that one time, I, don't, I think the time that I've been at Joint, I don't think we had a major, major outage of all our infrastructure, like ever, um, besides that one data center reboot that happened a long, long time ago. Um, but like I said, yeah. we never had like every data center out or anything like that. I mean, I, I don't think Amazon has either, but they've had, you know, major, um, Availability zones out. Um, look at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, I have to. I have to jump a few minutes early, so I think we're going to just end right here. But um, I really want to thank everybody for for joining and participating um, in today's office hours. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I've got some stuff to go think about and things that I want to go work on. So I'll be chatting with all of you over slack and discord and all that about how to implement some of this documentation stuff and i'll take a look at antora like i said jasper i'll be hitting you up for some help i'm sure um but yeah you know for my co-workers i'll sure i'm gonna be bouncing ideas off of you guys and having you peer review stuff and and for uh for people out in the community i'm, I'm gonna be asking for suggestions as well so thank you everybody for joining and we'll see you on the next office hours Thanks, everybody. Thank you for hosting. Yeah, thank you for joining. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you.